Ta-da! <laughs> Sorry, guys. Thank you uh, for tuning in and for coming back. And I just want to give a shout out to Liz Ferris for my awesome The Gay shirt. The Gay. Um, holy cannolis, guys. Okay. So I wanted to gather you all here uh, for a little bit um, just to uh, discuss a couple things. Okay. It might be kind of long. I have, I, I, I don't, I lost count of the tabs. Okay. Um, open to go over with you guys. But first I want to say thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being here. Um, and welcome back to the channel. Um, so <clears throat> let's strap in and, um, let's, let's talk about it. Uh, first of all, no comments about my hair. It's growing out. Thank you. Secondly, that's not why we're here today. Um, so let's get into it. Let me pull up. There we go. My present. I want to share these some screen. There we go. Okay. So we're going to start with the OSA files here. Okay. And uh, once again, we have a back peek to uh, the doctrine, the special doctrine that Mike Rinder used to um, ascribe to. But, but before we get to that, let me find, where's my, is this it? Nope. It doesn't tell me what all these tabs are. And it's very, where did it go? Oh, I got rid of it. Okay, hang on. So we'll go here. Somehow I deleted those tabs. That's silly sauce. So let's let's start at the beginning here. Um, there we go. All right. So we're gonna start here. So a uh, couple days ago on the tenth. Um, Yesterday, Mike posted this, a social media expert analysis of SPTV. Um, I don't know who this person is, I'll be honest with you. Uh, but anyway, so <clears throat> he, now, Jefferson is a, a someone who's been speaking out about Scientology for many decades um, and knows a lot about its inner workings and everything else. So I don't know if he's referring to Jefferson as the social media expert or if he's referring to the author, Monia Ali, who wrote this article on Substack, okay? Um, and then he tries to feign like he doesn't know what these things mean because he's just, you know, he grew up in a cult, but he can't say that because that's Aaron's line. Um and so it says, unfortunately, contains fancy terms. It'd be more understandable if she used simple language, but it's enlightening nonetheless, right? Um, and the things that he highlights from this article, which are quite long, um, are what started as a fight against Scientology has transformed into a fight against the main character of the week, diffusing the motivated indignation against big, bad, and to negative attachments to the people who have become fan objects. The mission isn't to take down Scientology anymore. It's to keep those stats up. And then at the very bottom of the article, she lists two points, right? One is about Mike himself that he decided not to highlight. The other one is says at this time, the Aftermath Foundation is the only one dedicated to helping people leaving Scientology. Then, of course, Mike's like, oh, you bet there will be commenters here and elsewhere to prove her point. Okay. First of all, Mike doesn't leave any of the negative comments on his blog, so you won't see them there. But let's go um, to the actual article, okay? So it's by her, her monk ears, exiled fan. Her name is Monia Ali, and she wrote this all the way back on Valentine's Day, okay? Um, activist fandom and the defanging of the anti-Scientology movement, right? So... Um, when activists become fan objects and history becomes narrative, the cause becomes secondary. Now you could take, and with, with her description there, you could take any fandom. You could take Lord of the Rings. You could take uh, the Mandalorian. You could take Star Wars, Star Trek, all these fandoms and, and, and insert it into her, her proposed thesis here. 
right? Um, so she started watch. I'm just going to summarize here, but she started watching during the pandemic because she was bored, right? Um, she was on board with it on the takeoff of what would be known as SPTV, right? She summarizes how that comes about um, in December 2022, and this is all accurate right? It came from a fan giving that name to Mike, Mark, Claire, and Aaron doing Monday nights together, right? Um, now, what she leaves out is because she didn't talk to me or Aaron or anybody else, um, how that network grew, right? Um, so she just talks about the network's growth felt like a success in and of itself. And it, that is true. It is a success in and of itself, right? Because of the people who are participating in it, not because of any one person. Now, that success stemmed uh, a lot from uh, Aaron, who talked to me, talked to many people and was like, hey, you have a valid story. You should start a channel. And here's how you do it. But up, but bump. P.S. He's also the one that helped Mike and Mark and Claire start their channels. Okay, because Aaron has been doing this the longest. This isn't an Aaron fan post, everyone. So let's just calm that down. So now she goes into how the conflict is happening, and um, this this man Dominic Pediman explained the impact of social networks. Um, Yada, yada, yada. So then she puts up a quote where she's blacking out the names for some, some reason. How many video, you know, like saying basically there's a difference between this type of thinking and stance who proclaim to fave their outsold whenever else someone else is discussed. So I don't know whose channel this came from. It just says comment on a drama channel's YouTube community post. Aftermath Foundation, AMF. Um, AMF is the Aftermath Foundation, which seeks to support those who wish to leave Scientology. Um, I noticed how fanish the landscape had become in August 2023 when Jenna Miscavige was teased in addition to the cadre of former member channels, right? Okay, yeah. Um, Jenna hasn't really done a lot of public speaking since she wrote her book. She was busy raising her children and running a business. And her book was, you know, uh, a lot of stuff. Her, But this is so condescending. Her welcome gift was going to be high subscriber count as well as people were directed to subscribe to her channel in anticipation of her participation. So when we say, or if I say, hey, you guys should subscribe to Liz or you guys should subscribe to Aaron or whatever, that's a suggestion. You can subscribe to whoever you want. You don't, if you're not subscribed to me, please subscribe, but you don't have to, okay? Like, but um, this makes it sound like, again, that there is some sort of org board Scientology-esque structure here in SPTV. There is not. And that somehow there is a commander or someone in charge. Also not true. Um, you know, the live cast to all participating channels. And yes, we do encourage you to watch from all of them. Why? Because then everybody gets watch hours and it helps the own... In creator's YouTube algorithm. That's not unusual. Um, so, uh, you know, she, and she even says it's playing by the rules. It's straightforward. Asking for like subscribe comments, participation is a necessary part of establishing a foundation on social networks so that you can have an impact. Yes. All right. So the live chats now, the, you know, um, content pharma drumming. Uh, so then because of the algorithm, now her YouTube, you know, subscription stuff is all messed up. And that obviously bugged her. So then she wants to talk about how, because of all these people now, that's how we, we, the collective, we all decided to focus our energy on one person or another person or whatever. Again, because she didn't talk to me or anyone else involved, um, and this is fine. This is her own conclusions and stuff. Um, it, it just is interesting to me, right? So she says, this fight for the public narrative is also more noticeable when looking at how fan communities are being treated by the fan objects themselves. Um, I, I don't know who that's directed to. Um, you know, and then she makes a comment about the Discord and she went there and everything's fine and it's all nice and dandy and she doesn't understand why that was even 
pulled into the conversation at all. Um, it's not private. You know, anybody can join, blah, 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 blah. Um, there have been multiple cycles of drama and intensely polarized discourse over the last six months or so. Presently, the chopping block is inhabited by Mike Grinder and the Aftermath Foundation. Secondary targets are being accused of covering up his crimes, even though Rinder has disclosed plenty of past abuses himself. There should be a gigantic asterisk there. <laughs> um, his book doesn't disclose that. His streams haven't disclosed that. He didn't disclose any of the real-time things that he had knowledge of or was involved with during the filming of the Aftermath show. And maybe in the future, I'll do a breakdown of every single episode to break that down on how, you know, Mike just sat there and cried and, you know, nodded and asked people intrusive questions that he pretty much already knew the answer to. Because if you watch the show back now, Mike is very careful to craft the narrative of every participant so that they tell exactly what they he wants them to tell. The most telling episode of that is the episode where he interviews, along with Leah, of course, Marie Bilheimer, whose husband at the time, Aaron Pullen, um, unalived himself inside the test center. And Mike very carefully gets Marie to indicate which people in OSA she spoke with and really wants that to be out loud, that it wasn't him who she spoke to. But let's not forget who was the head of OSA at that time and who sent the MAA to go talk to Marie at that moment. It was Mike. But he's going to pretend like he didn't know what happened. You tell us, you, you guide me. And then, you know, his name was somehow never brought up in an entire conversation in an organization that she worked with him in. I'm going to just, we'll just leave that one there for right now. So um, then she goes on to be very, uh, I'm trying to think of an appropriate word to say here. Yeah. I don't know. It's just uh, so saccharine and so just overly patronizing. That's the word I'm looking for here. It's perfectly reasonable that people who feel they were victimized by Rinder and others have grievances against him, but turning it into a public spectacle has no endpoint and cannot be counted on for closure. Right? So this is the part where she's saying that people shouldn't get a, an apology, right? Um, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then what started as a fight against Scientology, the quote I read to you earlier. All right. So then this is the thing. To the state, Jenna Miscavige has only participated in one stream. And it's the only one on her YouTube channel. The subscribers she amassed remain in waiting. Oh, my God. A streamer hasn't put more content up. Call the press. At this time, the Aftermath Foundation is the only one dedicated to helping people leave. Okay. So a lot of people commented and um, all of that kind of stuff. Okay. And... Uh, it's a great article. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Blah, 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 blah. So of course I, I commented, I have to go all the way down to the bottom and then like click this other thing because somehow you have to click 85 things. There's my comment from today. Okay. So what I said, I said, I'm trying to think of where to begin here. This article while well written and clearly long thought out leaves me feeling honestly flabbergasted. Number one, understood about the nature of discord that you as a participant are meant to scroll through all the thread to find the story. So it doesn't have, you know, to be repeated causing problems. That was the main thing that she was saying that people were coming in and they were causing problems because they kept asking questions that had already been answered and new people demanding answers. That's a quote from her are not appreciated. However, the content of the conversation, even without those appearance, uh, slights to their sensibility are grotesque at best, calling for the delight and destruction of all second gens, mocking content they haven't even watched, creating their own factions of loyalty, et cetera. It's exactly what you're describing of the drama channels outside of it. While you, while I admit, oops, I scrolled too fast, guys, sorry. Um, while you admit that no executive has clean hands, but then brush off, brush that off by saying public accountability will never happen, seems to excuse the actual trauma caused by the people involved. 
since I'm assuming, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you never suffered at the hands of Scientology or any single one of these former executives, you are basing your own conclusions on their only public, only on their public behavior to the YouTube and television audience. How then, without the knowledge or experience of having lived through any of that or continuing to experience the tactics of Scientology being played out on you in this public arena by those supposed, quote, ex-executives, um, could you make that conclusion, especially without talking to anyone on this perceived, quote, other side you're referencing? Be happy that you've never been on the receiving end of a Sea Org reprimand and keep the rainbow thoughts about Mike Rindo close to your heart because this fight is about making sure that the perpetrators of the crimes face justice. Scientology is an organization. It's a name on a building. The people inside doing these actions, directing the crimes, are the ones that need to be held accountable for those actions some people hanging outside those buildings talking about crimes that, quote, Scientology did, don't want any of us to remember that they were the people who did those crimes. Not a group, not a building. That's what we're talking about. So she hasn't responded back yet. Um, so I don't know what it, it says. I'm not screen sharing. What is happening? Oh, <laughs> how about that one? Is that better? I was on the wrong thing the whole time. I apologize. I'm scrolling. I didn't see the screen. I have to get another screen, guys. Anyway, so um, I will scroll back up to the article. That was my response to the article. Her article is here. Let me show you here again. So it's activist fandom and the defanging of the anti-Scientology movement. Can you guys all see that now? All right. So, um, <laughs> and um, here's uh, the rest of the article here that I went over. I'm so sorry I wasn't, I wasn't, I thought I was screen sharing this page. It's a, it's a longish article, but if you want to read it, it's on her Substack, and her name on Substack is Exiled Fan. Okay. So go, go check out the article. Um, on the uh <laughs> WAP, we are professionals. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I'm trying. So um th that's the article. That's my response to that. So that's that's what's beginning uh this whole thing here, right? Um and let me uh, let's break it down in Scientology terms. Okay. So I'm gonna Try this again here. We're going to go to this one. There we go. All right. So now we're sharing this one. Here we go. So this is, again, the Office of Special Affairs. These are internal documents. Okay. This is the reputation of Scientology and LRH. Now, um, oh, there we go. Is that better? Can you guys see it bigger now? Okay. So... This was written uh, in 1976. So this document is as old as me, guys. It's almost 48 years old, okay? Um, this is going to, I'm just going to go over a couple parts here, but I'll post as many of these documents as I can on my community page, okay? Um, so by nature of his work in the PR, that's public relations, the PR comes into contact with the writings and and questions of the frontline suppressives on the planet, the media, the guiders of the media, the executive branches of governments, and their officials. What the public thinks and what these individuals think are entirely separate things, right? So he's going to get people to understand um, how to dig into the psyche here of regular people and um, uh, the officials. These are two different people that, that, you know, you're trying to influence, right? So... We'll go to the second page here. And he says, this war, oops, this war is actually a war of thought and utterances. It is one with the best think and the best speak. The R in PR has to also stand for reality. When you degrade your statements about Scientology into pale defense, you are out R. 
without reality. You're not with what everybody else is perceiving. In fact, you're being a bald-faced liar, okay? Um, And he goes on here and tells this story about the Marine sergeant who held his ground. Um, But he says, don't get conned into carrying on an enemy line. Defensive PR may be necessary in a flap, but start specializing in offensive PR and to hell with whether SPs consider it offensive to them since it is. Say what Scientology really is. And if you have any doubts about what I am and what I do, then find out for yourself. Sound familiar, guys? Sound familiar? All right. So this is the current strategy that Mike is employing about himself. Right, because he considers us, anyone <laughs> who's not with him, to be the, the SPs that he is now fighting. Because this is a battle that has been completely manufactured solely by Mike and um, continues on by him. Because he said what he said, we said what we said, the dust was settled, we'd all moved on. Right. We're all talking about what's going on with the protesters, what's going on with, you know, things getting shut down. Nope. It's got to keep punching. Got to keep punching because if he is not perceived as the de facto leader out here, as the person with all of the knowledge and there's other experts. uh Oh, hot dog. He might not be the one. Okay. So I I have a lot of Scientology references to go over here, but I want to just show them to you guys. Now, um, thankfully, uh, we have the opportunity to have the PTSSP course uh, available to us. Now, PTSSP course, as you know, is the course like every Scientologist is forced to do if they get sick, they get injured, um, they're going to go into PR, um, anything like that, because you have to understand the SP. Okay, you have to understand the suppressive person and how to handle them appropriately. All right. So um, let's start here. All right. There we go. Let's share Z's that one. All right. So this one is a policy letter, obviously from 1972, how to handle black propaganda. Uh, rumors and whispering campaigns, right? So black propaganda, black equaling bad or derogatory. Okay, propaganda equaling pushing out statements or ideas is the term used to destroy reputation or public belief in persons, companies, or nation. Okay, so that's L. Ron Hubbard's definition of black propaganda. Anything that is bad, uh, that's being used to destroy the reputation or public belief in a person, company, or nation. Okay, now, he doesn't say whether or not this is true information. Anything that is perceived to be destroying someone's reputation is black propaganda, okay? For example, and I've told this story before, but I'll tell it very briefly. Um, I received over 50 hours of security checks because I said that COB was as tall as me. In fact, he's like a little bit shorter. But anyway, that was perceived as black propaganda, because that made him seem weak. I was trying to make him seem small and insignificant. These were all the things that were told to me. I had to tell over these, you know, however many hours, 50 plus hours, who I said that statement to, why I said it, what was my intention, what was the evil purpose behind saying that to that particular person and all this stuff so that they could trace down and go find all these people that I had said, COB is as tall as me. And and go, well, no, 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 no. Why he's not short. He's just, you know, he's he's a big, strong, handsome, healthy man, you know. So this is the ridiculous things that Scientology considers black propaganda. It's anything that they perceive is bringing them down. Scientology is a child trafficking cult. Fact. Black propaganda. Scientology forces abortions of its Seerg members. Fact. Black propaganda. Okay, so you have to understand the the think in Scientology, right, is that anything that is said against you 
is black propaganda if it brings your reputation down. Now, I've had people in the comments tell me that I'm fat, am I transitioning, um, all these things. None of that is black propaganda. Um, whether or not I am fluffy and have a little extra, uh, you know, flesh, sure. Um, other things weren't true, which I addressed, you know, when people keep trying to do like the, the transitioning comment. I, I am a born cisgender woman. That's just fact. Okay. But it's still not black propaganda. Now, um, by that, by their definition, it is by my own personal definition, because I've done therapy and, you know, actually understand the world around me. Um, I, I understand that those people, you know, it's just a comment. It's, it's, you know, it's fine. Uh, does it make me always feel toasty inside? No, but <laughs> I don't think some of those are meant to, and that's fine. So, um, we'll, we'll go down here, right? The technique seeks to bring a reputation so low that a person, company, or nation is denied any rights, whatever, by general agreement. It is then possible to destroy the person, company, or nation with a minor attack if the black propaganda itself has not already accomplished this. Now, um, this seems, and correct me if I'm not hearing this correctly, a lot like what Mike, Mark, Claire uh, have been doing constantly to Aaron. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. So, um, so they pass on slanderous rumors, right? And this is talking about like the SP, right? Um, and what they do when the numbers of such rumors exist and are persistent, one suspects a whispering campaign. Mm. I think that's even been used. This is not because people whisper these things, but because like an evil wind, it seems to have no source. Okay. Yeah. It's um so ominous, Elrond. So ominous. Okay. So much black propaganda is, of course, more bold and appears blatantly um, in irresponsible or covertly controlled newspapers and radios and television. So this is one of the many pieces of things where he just tells you flat out, do not trust any media, right? Um, here again, and then the attacker. Okay, so now he's going to break down who this person is who is doing the attacking, right? Um, the attacker has an evil purpose in life. He is a thing of death, not life, and his harvest is a death harvest. Wow. Wow. Such a person feels he cannot be safe unless everything else is dead. His evil purpose takes many forms and expressions. The end product is the same, death. Um, then it says, where an attacker has gone too far, uh-oh, hot dog, he himself then is attacked. Long, bitter quarrels and national wars are alike to the to, alike the to and fro exchange of violence. So, this is a little telling for Mike here, that last quote. Um, there we go. Okay. So now, back at the top, where the attacker lacks physical means of destroying others and where his own purpose would fail if disclosed, the attacks become covert. He uses word of mouth, press media, any communication channel to spit his venom. He hides himself as the source, and he makes the verbal attack seem logical or real or proven. He counts on the utterances being picked up or distorted and passed on by the more base people in the society. This is black propaganda. It's intended to reduce a real or imagined enemy, hurt his income, and deny his friends and support. Okay. Um... Let me see here. Make sure there's nothing on the last page here. I just had all of them here. So, um, yeah, he's he's saying there's a law of omitted data. You believe this, like, I, the most strict dogma, right? A vacuum tends to fill itself. Old philosophers, old philosophers said that nature abhors a vacuum. Actually, the surrounding pressure flows into an area of no pressure. It is this way when a person with a co person, company, or nation hit by lies, the person tends to withdraw. This already tends to pull things in. The person who does not then wish to put out data, he becomes to some degree a mystery. 
to fill that mystery, people will invent data. This is true of persons, companies, or nations. This is where public relations is a necessity, right? So this is why Scientology has the doctrine of always attack, never defend. Because if you become a secret, then all these people are going to make up stuff about you. That's what he's saying, basically, right? And um, if you tell people all these things, then you're not a mystery. And then there's only one thing to believe, which is what you're saying, right? Um, and uh, yeah, Jazzy, the, the Squirrel Squad in LA now has others in Denver, Austin, Chicago, Seattle, Portland, Hawaii, and et cetera. I've been going through a lot in a very short period of time, yet they understand the goal. Yes. Um, and, and the goal, it, it, which I made clear in my retort there to the article, is Scientology is an entity, right? So Scientology cannot be held responsible for the crimes that were committed against people, okay? So A, Scientology, the entity, needs to lose its 501c3 uh, status. That has never slipped my mind. That is the goal for Scientology as an entity. In addition to that, the people inside the organization, okay, um, who have done these directives who are using these policies to harm their members and former members and people associated with former members, right? They need to be held accountable for those actions, whether or not the actions are based on this policy or their fervent belief in Scientology or anything else, right? So this is, this is the part um, that they have to understand, right? Um, so not because he, I'm trying to read some of the comments too, but just, you know, because I don't have the second screen, which I'm going to get, cause I'm just on my little MacBook air here. Um, I'm missing some of them. So summer, if you're in there, can you guys star some of the questions that are coming in, um, for me and some of the other stuff? Cause I do want to address that after I'm not going to not address it. All right. So. That is, um, like he even gives this example here. So let me, let me share this one here. We'll just go here. I think this is it. Nope. There we go. All right. So this is the one we want here. So he gives an example here. Um, the PR slang for it is dead agenting. Oh, we've heard that one before, right? Back here, he says at the bottom, so you have to fill the vacuum of omitted data with factual data, prove all false utterances heard are lies, and discredit every rumor encountered. Interesting. So the PR slang for it is dead agenting. This is where this term comes from. The whole other dead agent thing that I talked about. So this consists of disproving utterly the false statement with documents or demonstration or display. One has to have a kit, a collection of documents, or the ability to demonstrate or something to display. So the statement, I've been told you are in trouble with income tax people. Rebuttal. Here's a document of fully paid taxes and a letter of commendation from the tax authorities. Like the IRS sends out like, you know, stars, like certificate, you paid your taxes. Like that's not, that's not a thing. Um, result, whoever told him that is now dead with him as an accurate informer, thus dead agenting. The best way to dead agent is when the person makes some disprovable statement, find who to fix his mind on it, and then produce the rebuttal statement. I hear you aren't married to the man you're living with. Oh, who told you that? I forget. Well, you'll remember, and I'll show you some proof. Uh, what was a man? Who? Joe Schmo. Okay, here's my marriage certificate. Who's the Joe Schmo nut anyway? Now Joe Schmo is the mystery. How come he lies? What's in it for him? Blah, 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 blah. Right? Um, the problem is every time we state a fact about Scientology, like we talk about my story or someone else's story, they will put together these little packs of why we are bad people, why we're untrustworthy, why things we say are not true, um, to get people who are listening to us to not listen anymore, to not, um, you know, all of that, right? Um, 
And uh, it is unbelievable to me that that is still their strategy. Now, um, just more examples of that. It's a very long policy, guys. I apologize. Let me just get rid of it so I don't click on them later. Um, and we'll go to the next one. Yeah, this is so that's that's how you handle black PR, right? Um, and you have to remember only counterattack handles. Only counterattack handles. I'm gonna repeat that one more time for the people in the back. Only counterattack handles. This is another part of it. Okay, so you have to uh keep attacking, right? Statements one makes can be curved. She had a birthday party becomes the delinquents in her circle gathered yesterday for a sex orgy and pretended the police that it was a birthday party. No one was jailed. Okay. Like that, that kind of stuff, right? The brand of black propaganda is very easy to see in writing twists. Okay. Um, so you know, but see, this is what they're saying here, but attacks, which are not true, earn suits. So one must attack only on proven ground. Guys, I've lost track of the amount of times that Scientology has been sued for their BS and nonsense. Okay. And they're not winning. They're not hashtag winning. Okay. Right now. Um, it is, uh, pretty, pretty bad, pretty, pretty bad. Um, in any event, the attack is a long cycle a complex cycle, and often an expensive cycle. It consists of investigate and attack. Guys, it's a long cycle. I, I, you know, you're in it to win it when you are attacking someone with Scientology. This is not a, you know, a namby-pamby thing, as he likes to say, right? Um, this policy still goes on. It's like a 10-page policy, guys. We're not going to go over every um, page because it's too much. Um, but okay. So this is the last page that I'll show here. And it's the last page of the policy. It says as weary a task as it may seem to some as heartbreaking as it can be, one still has to fight and fight with tools and technology and dedication superior to that of the enemy, but progressing and getting small gains, small penetrations, small little skirmishes and battles one at length comes up to victory after victory and at last wins the whole war. Okay. So, yeah, this is, everyone thinks, why doesn't this keep going away? Why can't we just stop talking about fetch? Because this is not a tiny little moment in time. This is the, the mentality that's still in this man's brain that he is continuing to punch at every single person that isn't on his perceived team. Okay. So we've got more policies guys. That wasn't the, the end of that. My God. So the PTSSP pack is filled with just uh, gems, just absolute gems. So let me go to the next one here. So this one is called, Um, handling the suppressive person, the basis of insanity. Just so. Um, right. So. <clears throat> here he says the suppressive person has three operations um, when they're uh, regarding Scientology, right? Such a case seeks to engage upon regarding Scientology. A, to disperse it. B, to try and crush it, and C, to pretend it didn't exist. Um, now, I just want to comment on that and it, it, for just a second, because these three things are exactly what Mr. Rinder is engaging upon against people that he used to work with to get this common goal of taking down Scientology, right? He's trying to scatter all of the people who are supporting, trying to crush the people he doesn't like, and then pretend, uh, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Now, the, the pretend it didn't exist thing is something that he does tons of times to pretend that he didn't exist in that environment. But I digress for a moment here. So let's go to page two here. Now, 
He says, <clears throat> the suppressive person who is visibly seeking to knock out people or Scientology is easy to see. He's making such a fuss about it. The attacks are quite vicious and full of lies. But even here, are the suppressive person exists on the other side of a potential trouble source. Visibility is not good. So every SP has like PTSs attached to them, like their own little like fandom, right? The whole trick they use is to generalize bad news and theta. Everybody is bad. The Russians are all bad. Everybody hates you. The people versus John Doe. Uh, sometimes it does say that, by the way, on warrants. The masses, the secret police will get you. Um, you know, he talks about this person can't get any gains in Scientology. Nobody gets those anyway, but that's a whole other thing. Um, oh, so the questions you do to try and find out <clears throat> if somebody is suppressive or not. Will the person permit auditing at all, or does their history of routine auditing reveal any gains? So it, that has to do with the individual. It's actually, they use that to say that because we don't want kids to get audited. Um, we don't want kids in Scientology that we're not permitting auditing at all. It's actually only on yourself. So if you were to like consciously go into a church of Scientology and say, I'd like to receive some auditing, but then you're just like fucking around the whole time and you won't like let the session happen. Um, or don't answer the questions and things like that. That's really more of what uh, Lafayette met here, right? And then, of course, looking over their folder, do they say, I feel better, things are good, does the needle float, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, so it's not quite as uh, crazy as it uh, sounds, but it, they use that to say if you're preventing Scientology from being delivered, then you are in fact a, a suppressive person, right? So obviously that's how they look at all of the protesters. Scientology sees them as an enemy, right? Um, so if despite all of the trouble, like you invest all this time in here and care, the case did not gain, or if the case simply didn't gain despite auditing, no matter how many years are intensive, then you've caught yourself a suppressive person. That's the boy or girl. This case performs continual calculating covert hostile acts, damaging to others. This case puts up the turbulence and upset into the environment, breaks the chairs, messes up the rugs, and spoils the traffic flow with goofs done intentionally. Um, so this sounds like a, a really terrible coworker. Like if I was working with this person, uh, it would be awful, right? But this is in fact Scientology and what they're doing uh, constantly to people like myself, everybody out here speaking truth about them, right? So then now in this part, he goes on to list all of, oh, did I skip a page? No. So here is the the characteristics of a suppressive okay so um these are all the things he said they, they're hidden hostile acts which include chopping up auditors and that doesn't actually physically mean with like an axe guys it's just like if you're going through auditors like if you were breaking up with them and getting another therapist right pretending withholds which are actually criticisms anyone in the background i don't know who could be doing that um giving out data about their past lives and our whole track that really hold such objects up to scorn and make people who do remember wince. Could that be like everybody in Scientology who thought they were Cleopatra or Marilyn Monroe? I can't even count the number of people who all decided they were that, okay? Chopping up orgs, altering technology to mess it up, spreading rumors about prominent persons in Scientology. Oh, attributing Scientology to other sources. Um, because Elrond stole it from other people, so he didn't want people to do that. Criticizing auditors as a group, um, doing things. Dev T is a great Scientology word, guys, but it's just it stands for developed traffic. If you're just like causing a, a bunch of issues to happen and you can't um, get things done because of all those issues, it's just like basically uh, having continual video meetings that should have been emails right? That would be an example. Uh, <clears throat> giving fragmentary or generalized reports about Entheta that cave people in. So just saying things about other people or things or events that are used to totally put somebody in a deep depression and like blow up their anxiety, essentially. Um, refusing to repair air sea breaks, not apologizing, not getting back in communication with people you've harmed, things like that. Engaging in discredible sexual acts. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, hot dog. 
This is, and this is just one out of the 26 things that he talks about. But this is, now you have to understand a discreditable sexual act in Scientology is also masturbation, is also, uh, in some cases, if you were going to get qualified to go to gold or int, engaging in um, oral sex, um, you know, uh, anything being gay, uh, you know, that is not just cis, hetero, missionary style, vanilla, vanilla, vanilla sex is a discreditable sexual act. So anything that you might like that isn't that, that goes in that category, guys. Okay. <laughs> um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Committing, you know, making mistakes, which gets seniors in trouble. Making a mistake, which gets your senior in trouble. So if you make an error and the person that's your boss who should be managing you correctly, et cetera, now, now you're the SP. Okay. Non-compliance with instructions. That's an SP characteristic, guys. Don't non-comply with instructions. Okay. Organizing revolt or mass protest meetings. Well, sorry, guilty. And snarling about justice. These are all traits, right? He says, there's the cancer, burn it out. This is the fellow that makes life miserable for the rest of us. This is the one who overworks executives. This is the auditor killer. This is the course and turbulator or PC killer. There's the cancer, burn it out. He's not, you know, Elron was not one to mince his words, guys. Okay. Um, so he talks about how they're stuck on the time track for like the next page and a half here. They're stuck in a long, long time ago in some imaginary, uh, you know, incident that they can't get out of, right? Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. This is stuff about the, um, the e-meter. And then he says... <clears throat> um, sometimes two suppressive persons are found together. <laughs> so one can't always say which is the suppressive person in a pair. The usual combination is suppressive person and the potential trouble source. However, you don't need to guess about it or observe their conduct. It's really a no gain case, no case gain by routine processing that is the only valid test. So the only valid test to figure out whether or not someone's a suppressive is to put them on the e-meter do like hundreds of hours of auditing on them. And then if they don't get any improvement from all of this Scientology mumbo jumbo, they are uh, a suppressive. That's the only test. That's what he says. But how many people in Scientology have been declared suppressive, like myself, after many hours of supposed gain? And now these protesters who were never even in Scientology, they don't even have a folder, they're suppressive. So none of that. It, again, Scientology does ridiculous things, right? They they look all right. They sound reasonable. They're often clever, but they are solid poison. They can't as is erase anything in their reactive mind, anything. Day by day, their pile grows. Day by day, their new overts and withholds pin them down tighter. They aren't here, but they sure can wreck the place. There is the true psycho. Oh my goodness, this one, I forgot, has so many pages. Um... And then he goes on. More, more blathering about the person not having any um, gain, right? In Scientology, talks about people blowing, um, leaving, you know, without approval, um, right? Like the blown student. The student, however, may have blown off the premises or be gone entirely on a minor momentary blow where all it took was the student's auditor and a few words to get the student back, the matter is not a real blow. But where the student leaves the premises in a blow or doesn't turn up for class, the tech division, okay, this is now the supervisors, word clearers like me, uh, just people who are supposed to be instructing people in Scientology, must send an instructor and the student's auditor over to the HCO Department of Inspections and Reports. Then an HCO representative should go with them at once to pick up the student. This is the blow drill that we've talked about many times. The student is brought back with as little public commotion as possible. And the procedure of HCO checkout is followed as above, right? So then they have to go through this whole sequence of like getting this sec check before you can leave. This is how and what they use to keep Sea Org members trapped, to keep 
parishioners trapped, to keep people they've human trafficked over many uh, countries and everything else trapped. Every time I left, and I blew many times, uh, teams of people were sent out to retrieve me, to force their way into my parents' home, to search for me at every airport, bus station, you know, train depot, wherever. Okay. So Mike isn't trying to recover any of us. I'm not saying that, but these are the things that are in your mind, right? So when someone takes off from you, when someone leaves you, when someone is no longer your friend or you guys have a disagreement and you're, you're separated, that person has to be recovered and handled. Okay. Um, otherwise it's going to cause a commotion. It's going to cause a stir, right? So you have to get all the people back. Um, to make sure they don't tell any truths out there about what's going on, right? So you have to get them quickly back into the fold so that you can narrate the story. You can drive it wherever it's going, okay? Um, huh, let's Let's carry on here. So let me get to the last page of that one just to check it here. Here we go. All right. So this is the last page. So then you have to, you know, uh, get this waiver signed. I having, you know, my name having refused to abide by the codes of, you know, the San Francisco org do hereby waive any further rights I may have as a Scientologist and return for my course fee of however much paid. Do hereby quit claim, quit any claim I may have on name of org or Scientologist personnel or any person or group or organization Scientologist. So this is when somebody's getting a, a refund, right? Only when this is signed uh, this, may the student have his course fee returned, but no other fees as he has accepted that service. So if you're currently on one course and you've paid for a boatload of your bridge to total freedom, you can get that one course that you were on refunded, but they're not going to give you all the other money back. That's basically what they're saying. Um, the ex-student should realize this makes him fair game and outside of our justice codes. He may not have recourse of any kind beyond refund and after signing can only return to Scientology as per HCO policy on fair game. Now you've become fair game if you decide to separate yourself, right? Now, the last policy, because this is so many policies that I want to go over with you guys, is called responsibility. This is a an HCO a B as 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 opposed to a policy letter. It's a bulletin. They're both doctrine in Scientology. One just comes on red on white. The other one comes on green on white. Okay. Um, this is something as Sea Org members that we have had to uh, kind of memorize and chant and other things um, over and over because this is what it directs a lot of the dogma, okay? So it says, if the definition of operating Thetan is knowing and willing cause over all dynamics, that's all eight of them, then we see at once that responsibility must go hand in hand with making an operating Thetan, right? Um, every Sea Org member is considered an operating Thetan just because you join the Sea Org, right? Um, and you have to make sure that you never go against um, that dogma, right? So any excuse that you have, you don't have it. You're tired. Well, you're an OT. You're going to just make yourself not tired. Um, you're sick. You're an OT. You're going to get over it. Here's some garlic and some vitamin C, right? Um, so uh, down at the bottom here, as <clears throat> Remember that whenever a person discloses to view discreditable overs and withholds, we must run with what part of that act or incident could you be responsible for? You're going to see more case gains than you've ever seen before, providing you have the stamina to get over this first hump. Um, it's always about what you did, what you did wrong, what crimes you have, instead of what happened to you, this, this portion right here. So if you disclose to view, um, this happened to me, 
and it was a bad experience and blah, 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 blah. You would immediately be asked, what part of that actor incident could you be responsible for? Because again, Scientology is not responsible for, and thank you, it is Darvo. I, people keep repeating that, but it, it, yes. Um, <clears throat> you are The people who commit crimes are not responsible for that because you're either a potential trouble source who, who sucked that in, or you're a suppressive who's doing things who's now getting like retaliation back. So everything that happens is ultimately your fault, okay? Everything that happens is your fault. There is no like two ways about it. Okay. And so this attempt again at rewriting the history, redirecting what's going on is just as I've laid out in the policies here, just straight up uh, Scientology that's being played out, right? With the refusal to help Miriam with the refusal to acknowledge his part in those things. It's like, I, I went and spoke to Jessica Palmadesa when we were, and I don't know if it showed up on her live or not, but I asked her directly. Okay. If when you first showed up at the test center and you were, you know, like, what's this Scientology trending on, um, you know, TikTok, uh, what if, you know, why, why, why are you here? And if they had just come out of the test center, okay. The Sea Org members and just done like a viral TikTok dance and just like had fun and like given them some shit and like played along with it. I said, would you still be here protesting right now? Would this be your life? And she's like, absolutely not. This would be, it would have been a completely different story because they can't be part of what's reality of what's happening in society. They don't understand 2024. They don't understand any of these things. What they understand is black propaganda. They're being attacked. We're going to punch them in the face. We're going to call in the SWAT team. We're going to, you know, do, do, we're going to send homeless junkies to attack these people. We're going to do all of the usual tricks. Okay. So then what happened to people on the outside? People like me, Aaron, Liz, and Liz, and Alicia, and all, all of the peeps, okay, and Lara and Serge. What, what happened to us? <clears throat> well, we saw what was happening with the protesters going and the reactions they were getting. And they were like, we were like, oh, my God, Scientology hasn't changed in, like, ever. And they're just, they're, it, this is going to be bad. This is going to be a oh, hot dog for them. This is bad panda. So, we were like, how can we help these guys? Let's subscribe to their channels. Let's get them some airtime. Let's, you know, promote the hell out of what they're doing. Let's talk about it. Let's highlight it. What that has created is an organic, and I do mean organic because we're not going out and talking to these people who are not Scientologists and being like, hey, could you go protest at Chicago Org? That would be awesome. Thanks. Y'all who are out here watching our content, listening to our stories, seeing what has become of our lives as a result of having been born in or worked for Scientology are like, what is going on? And then you see the protesters in LA and you're like, well, I have a, I have a church of Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> I did not mean for that to happen guys. That was amazing. Um, I have a church. It's like an idea. I have a church of Scientology in my town. I'll go and I'll do a protest there. And that is how all of these things have rolled out. Pearl Snappy, um, Chi Town, uh, the guys, uh, I, I'm leaving off so many people. There's another guy in New York, all these people, majority of whom are not ex Scientologists, are out there asking the questions that we've been asking for years to Scientology's face, and they cannot take it. They close their doors, they're calling security, they're calling cops. And what is this creating? More protests. Why? Because it is showing their criminal hands. It is showing that they are not a trustworthy organization, that they are not a credible religion, that they are not, uh, you know, not holding children there against their will or people from other countries and things like that when we can't see Sebastian anymore and he's not from America and we figured that out. All of these things 
Okay. Uh, keep showing once again, Scientology's hands. Now to get back to Mike here for a second, I'm going to say it again for the people in the back. Has Mike Rinder done things since leaving Scientology that have benefited some people who have also left Scientology? Yes. I'm not here to debate that. I'm not here to say he didn't help X, Y, and Z person or Claire or Mark. Has the Aftermath Foundation helped some people since its inception to get out of Scientology and have a better life? Yes. Again, not here to debate that. Okay. Not here to debate that. However, asterisk, have both of these entities, and I consider them completely separate guys. Mike Rinder is not the aftermath. Okay. He did not create it. He did not invent that foundation. Aaron and Louise did for the people who aren't remembering. Two people who have been unceremoniously removed from the board. They are the ones that came up with this idea and they recruited the other people to be on board. Okay. Let's just, let's just be perfectly clear. And when things got tumultuous in the behind the scenes there for all of the reasons that have become public and some that haven't, they decided, Luis decided to peace out and then all the stuff went down with Aaron. Okay. So now, instead of remaining separate church and state, I'm Mike Rinder. This is the foundation that I happen to be on the board of. He has compiled these two things into one personality. As if he's the reason it exists. He's the reason people are getting help. He's the reason to do all. That is not the case. Absolutely not the case. Okay. <clears throat> Have other people been harmed by the lack or sudden lack of support that they were receiving by the foundation? In recent times, yes. Were other people rejected out of hand in the early days of the Aftermath Foundation um, because they were already out for many years and were only here to help people who are newly getting out? Yes. And that created a lot of stir. Okay. But the Aftermath survived even that stir. Okay. And they went on to help other people to, to escape and get out of Scientology. Do I think that that purpose of helping people get out of Scientology and begin their new life in the real world is important? One million, billion, zillion percent yes. There was no Aftermath Foundation for me, guys. There was no supposed place I could go to reach out for help and say, I hope that, you know, uh, I don't know how to get a job. I don't have a resume. I don't have like, you know, funds. I, you know, nothing. There was nothing. No one there to answer questions. There was no like committee of people like, you're out of Scientology. Woo. Welcome to the new life. You know, just like doing this, uh, you know, thing. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, I think the concept of that is fantastic and it's needed. It's also needed for people coming out of any cult. It's not just Scientology. People in a cult who, especially those born in and grown up in it, have no idea what's going on out here because they're not, they don't have access to it. They're not allowed to, right? So continuing practices that you were trained in, that you were programmed to do, okay? After leaving the cult and then saying, I'm an ex and I'm here to help people and putting yourself in a position of power to control who gets helped, who doesn't get helped, um, how they get helped, communicating behind the scenes to authorities and other people maybe to direct their narrative it's still, that is not okay. It is not okay to try and interfere with a SA victim's real life case by messing with the people investigating it, Mike. It's not okay to try to change your past to seem prettier 
So you can still appear on TV shows and hang on Leah's coattails, you know, uh, because you're so famous. That is not okay. Right. And that is the whole point of the whole SPTV experiment, right? Was to bring in people from every aspect of Scientology, whether they had just been, you know, a public, um, former SEERG members from all levels, uh, people with different, you know, post titles, uh, people who were born in, people who walked in, all of this to be able for everyone to give their perspective on what happened to them in Scientology, not for us to be some, you know, new org where the, you know, people are just going to step into command and tell us what to do and narrate our story so that your personal crimes inside the church don't see the light of day. That's not my problem. It's not my problem that you, as an adult human, decided to stay there and do all those things. Okay? Whatever things you did do, talk about it. Heal with the people that you hurt. Go to therapy. Talk to a therapist. Okay? Because your blog isn't therapy. That's called a journal. You can journal about your feelings and like put it in there and be upset. That's what normal people do. Okay. They don't attack people that they're pretending to help with their very public large platform to try and annihilate them so that they stay shiny and in control. Okay. I am not in control of this group. I'm not the head of nothing. I'm not on the new board of the new foundation. I'm not. Who am I? I'm just Nora. I'm just a girl who was born into Scientology with two parents who were a little, okay, super dedicated and walked in and joined after being recruited for the bumpity bump time while it was on course and, you know, worked for Scientology starting when I was 18, got sent to the RPF. All those things happened. Other things. Okay. I happen to be in rooms with a lot of fun people and get privy to some conversations and things like that. And I can absolutely comment on all those things. But what has to happen from this point forward, because this is the new generation of like taking down Scientology. Okay. We're not just here to talk endlessly about celebrity fluff bullshit. And we're not here to talk endlessly about Scientology as this mystical being that somehow we're all going to take down because we cut off the head of the snake, you know, with David Miscavige. If, if David Miscavige were to resign from Scientology, someone else is going to replace him. Okay? That doesn't end Scientology. Now, would I like to see David Miscavige in jail for crimes against humanity? Yes. Absolutely. Because he ordered that shit. But I will tell you what, I will tell you what, if that man goes on the stand and he's asked direct questions, he's going to name names. He's going to, he's going to call some people out. And some of those names that he's going to call, he's not going to call out my name. I'm not worried about that. I mean, I would love to see the fabrication that that would be. I'll, I'll gladly come in and testify for that. But the names that he's going to call out are going to be Marty, Mike, Claire, Angie. Angie's not next. But, you know, all these other people who he worked with for years, Debbie Cook, he's going he's gonna to throw all these people under the bus and people who are still there, Ray Midoff, Heber, you know, Guillaume. He's going to call out people and be like, well, I didn't do this. Here's the evidence of so-and-so doing it. He probably has pictures because why does he have pictures? Because when you do, a, a, a you know, an operation, you have to send in what's called a compliance report, guys. The compliance report has to show evidence that you did all of the checklist items that you were assigned to do, and you have to include what? Pictures. Pictures or it didn't happen. And where are all those compliance reports of all of these dirty deeds and everything else? They're at RTC. 
And I'm sure David Miscavige is in the year 2024 at this point, and he's probably digitized all those. And he probably has that hiding in the Caymans, along with a shit ton of Scientology money. Okay. So if the shit ever hits the fan for him, he's got his own dead agent pack to barf out enough information about all of these people that I would be terror. I would be personally terrified if I had all of that sitting somewhere that I knew somebody had that actual information about me waiting to just barf it out everywhere. Okay. Um, so yeah, does Mike Rinder need to craft the narrative and make sure it's woven just the right way so that he still comes out on top? And we're just talking about OSA like he was never there and Scientology like he was never there and all of these things. abso fucking lutely abso fucking lutely guys. And this <laughs> is why, yes, things that he did to specific people still matter today. Because he hasn't taken accountability for it. He hasn't contacted those people and apologized. He hasn't actually looked inside himself to do the own trauma uh, therapy for himself, to be able to actively help somebody else through their trauma, okay? So he has no business being out here as a pillar of, you know, all these things to put himself in that position. Does he have value? Yes. Do I think that he should continue to be an expert for people to talk about Scientology? Yes. Because he has information that I don't, right? And he should go do that. Please do. Please contribute, as we would say in Scientology, contribute to the motion in that way. It is helpful, it is kind, and it is needed. But using your Scientology training and tactics against people out here who are doing the same thing as you, on a continual basis, especially against people who were essayed, destroyed as children, who you had a hand in doing that, taking away their parents, making sure they lived in squalor, enforcing arcane and un inhumane policies on children, then you need to stop talking about those people and you need to. Like, that's that's it. Like, for realsies, just, okay. Um, stick, as the great TLC said, don't go chasing waterfalls. Stick to the rivers and lakes that you're used to. Okay, let's just, let's try that. Um, so, <laughs> okay, so there seems to be some kerfluffle going on here in the comments. Let me, I'm going to address the comments now that um, we're, we're an hour in here. My goodness. Um, what is going on? So let me, um, the never in whisperer. Thank you. Thank you very much for that M71. I appreciate it. Um, or if you're making fun of me, I'll still take it as a compliment. Um, okay. Oh, oh, you want to talk about what I did? Do you have a, now, I know this, somebody said to eat this person, but I would love to know what, uh, if you haven't gone back through my streams, which apparently that's what you're supposed to do. And we're not supposed to talk about things of the past. I have talked many times about my participation and what I've did. I've apologized publicly, uh, to Nicole Kidman for my participation in, you know, uh, training her children to think of her as an SP. I've apologized uh, to Daniel Mustard, who's actually on with Liz Ferris, uh, for my constant recruitment of him across the street at the Shangri Lodge when I was a recruiter. So I, I, I don't not apologize for things that I was involved in. But the problem is, um, I, and I'm, I'm not even asking for an apology for myself from Mike Rinder for the way he treated me. Uh, while a, an associate producer, which I wrote about and I, and I spoke about, I'm not even asking for him to give me a call, which he has my phone number or text me or anything to say that he's sorry for that incident because I mean, it would be nice. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, and I didn't speak about that for years 
for, for a very important reason. I was just talking to a good friend about this yesterday. The reason why I didn't bring it up when it happened in the moment, A, because I was, I was an associate producer on the show. Of course, I wanted the show to succeed. So in, in that stance, I was applying the black PR phenomenon to myself, to the incident that happened to me, because I didn't want people to think badly about Mike. I didn't want them to think like, oh, he's not changed. I didn't want them to discredit the show. Or more importantly, to me at the time, my friendship with Leah, um, because I still to this day consider her a friend and someone who I care about very much. But I thought that that would harm her more than it would help. So I stayed quiet. I removed myself. I became extremely depressed and upset and didn't even watch the season that I produced or the next season. Why? Because I felt that I had been excommunicated. And my tweets were just very general after that. You can go back and look at my tweets about the aftermath. I would tweet, you know, tune in, all this stuff, because I was never not supporting it. But I couldn't as wholeheartedly dive into that like I had been. And so why am I talking about it now? Who who gives a shit what happened in 2017, right? Like, so I got screamed at. Oh, who gives a shit? Why it matters now is because I thought that that might have been a one-off event also. Like maybe, maybe Mike just had a temporary snap, right? And just did that to just me, to make me crush me like he used to do to other Sea Org members, right? When I see the repeated pattern of that behavior in the wild against people who in no way deserve it because they're not working for him, they're not trying to accomplish a task for him, they are simply trying to exist and tell their story, and I see that repeated pattern, I'm going to call it out. And now I'm going to talk about it. And truthfully, it took me years to heal from that, to be brave enough to say it. Because it's trauma. And trauma work is hard and it sucks. And it is not easy therapy. I can tell you that. Um, and uh, it is um, brutal. It is brutal to look at yourself and your trauma and work through it. So that's, that's my answer to that. Um, let me go down here and make sure... Um, I'm getting all of the things I want to address. I may have missed some questions earlier, guys. If you want to um, put a question in now, then please, please, please do um, so that I can get to it because I really, really do want to um, uh, answer questions. I'm starring some right now. And um, <laughs> a surge is here. Hi, Surge. Let's trust the patterns, not the paperclip withholds carefully curated narratives to prop themselves up while the kids still exposed to it all as we speak. 100% true, Serge. 100%. Thank you for uh, saying that. Um, so let me get to these questions here. Um, question, how triggering is it reading all this stuff for you, Nora? I hope you're okay. Thank you so much for that, Asen. Um, it is very triggering. I'm going to be honest. Uh, going through these policies today and trying to figure out what parts I wanted to talk about. Um, we'll see how I do after the live. That's that's the part that nobody sees, right? Except for my wife, who takes amazing care of me, um, who sees me, you know, collapsed on the bed, you know, in a fetal position and um, and loves me through it because I, I wouldn't be able to do this at all without her, guys. Um, it's extremely triggering to see the things that I once – very much believed in, um, and very much thought were the truths about the universe. It is also partially healing to see that I don't believe those things now, but try not to go into a shame spiral about like the fact that <laughs> I believe those things and, and use that to tell people and, and word cleared people on that stuff. So, you know, it's a, it's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag to answer your question. Um, comment never ends have wrung our hands, wondering how we could help the protests and audits allow us to do something. Yes, 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 yes. I am, I, I am in awe 
of the people out there protesting every day. I love you. I love everything about what you're doing. Um, if you have questions on things you can say or policies, please hit me up at my email. Um, and I can help you in that way because I can't be out every night protesting guys. Why? I have four kids. I, I just, I don't have the time to go out every night and protest. Also, I'm in, you know, the Portland metro area. We have one org, um, and there's a fantastic crew there. I do need to get over there and I'm going to work that out. But this is, this is more, this is easier for me. And to be honest, to be H, while I am working through my trauma, um, I am figuring out how the balance of all of this works, how to do exactly what I just did in this live, break down Scientology and what's going on, effectively communicate that and keep my sanity intact and have time for my family, which is the most important part for me. That's the whole, whole reason why I left right? Was to have a beautiful family and a beautiful life. So there has to be balance, right? Um, but yes, the protests, I, I fucking love it. I love every moment of it. Um, let me just move these ones here. We have some super chats. Let me check those out here. Uh, Kimberly in Japan. Thank you so much for the super sticker and konnichiwa. Arigato. Um, Let's see here. Shy town native. Uh, Mike knows the truth and should just admit and be better human as Zenu does not exist. Um, we pray for him during his cancer and he can't help Miriam. Yeah. I, I, I listen, anyone with cancer or anything else, I it again, separation of church and state. Mike's physical condition doesn't have anything to do with his responsibility in the actions that he is taking and has taken. Do I want him to suffer with cancer or anything like that? No, I don't think any human being should suffer through that. I really wish across the board, there was like a universal cure for cancer. I have lost too many relatives, friends to cancer. Scientologists by and large are hugely uh, get cancer and pass away and it's awful. Um, so no, I don't wish that on anyone. Um, it, it, not Mike, you know, I don't consider him even despite laying all this out. I don't consider him to be an enemy. I don't consider him to be a truly evil person. Is he doing things that are not helpful to people and harming them further with Scientology? Yes. Does he need to stop doing that? Yes. Okay. So this, I, I really hope that I'm being perfectly clear in, in my intentions and, and words during this stream, because I really want to make it crystal clear to everybody out there, the 1300 people watching. Thank you. And also to Mike Rinder, like just take a, take a note, take a note. Um, Ace and K and again, comment, it would be so easy for him to act like Mike Brown did when Lara confronted him, yet he decided to shit on everybody. Yes. If you guys haven't seen the two streams that Mike Brown did with Lara, um, Laura FM, where she let out a lot about how she felt personally harmed when she and Mike were in the Sea Org together and the things that he did. It is a great example of accountability, of taking true responsibility for your actions without reversing it, without blame, without excuses. Um, and it's not something that was easy, right? To hear all of the harm and destruction that you may have caused another person and what they're hanging on to about that. But Mike did it. Mike Brown did that. And I, I agree with you. Uh, Rinder should take a page out of that book. Um, at, at Serge Del Mar, never shut up. Your voice is so important. And the question for me, I guess, how triggering is it? Oh, yeah, I already I, I answered that one. But yes, I agree. Serge, don't ever shut up. Um, let me go back to the comments here and just see if there's anything else um question related that I missed while I was talking about those things. Um, but yeah, I would I would refer you guys to Mike Brown um for uh, you know, that. Um Pippi Longstocking Forever. Uh 
uh, comment. Thank you, Nora, for explaining those policies. It's helpful and shows how dark LRH was. Thank you. And also, fun fact about Pippi Longstocking. Um, so if you ever saw the movie that was made in the 80s, right, with the, the girl with the Wendy's hair, my former aunt, Harriet Shock, who is a Scientologist, wrote the theme song. And I heard it before it was in the movie. She came out and busted out her piano. She says, I'm working on this for a new movie. What do you think? And then she's saying, Pippi Longstocking is coming into your world. That whole song, remember that? A freckle-faced, red-haired girl you want to know. Yeah, that one. She wrote that. Yeah. I just had to have a little Pippi Longstocking moment there. Um. Let me just check here for more questions or comments. <laughs> Uh, another comment here from SM Stenval. Uh, thank you for being genuine, open, straightforward, and funny. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, feedback. I, um, I love it. Uh, let's see here. Oh, thank you, Dr. Who Heather for reminding everybody. Another one of my great admins here. Uh, make sure to hit that like button and double check if you are subscribe aid, because if you're not, please, please do subscribe aid. I would love that. Um, and let me just scroll down to the bottom here one more time just to make sure. And if you, if you have a last minute question that I didn't get to, I, I, I'll give everybody like a minute to throw another question in there. Otherwise, I thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening. My hope in all of this, in all sincerity and honesty, is that um, we can move forward. We can start focusing in on the actual objective. Okay. Actual objective, getting Scientology's 501c3 status, revoke it across the board. Second, second objective, especially for those of us born in, no more kids in Scientology. No more. Get all the kids out, 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 out. Third objective, that the persons, because Scientology is an organization, it cannot be held responsible for things, right? that the person's responsible for the trafficking of children and foreigners across this country and American citizens, frankly, um, for the forced abortions, for the, uh, the RPFings, for the torture are held responsible and that the victims of those things get the justice they deserve. Those are the objectives. There's zero other reason for me to ever open my mouth about anything, guys, okay? Um, and uh, my my personal objective, let's keep these protests going until these guys' doors are just shut all the time and there's no new people coming in or regular Scientologists because they start looking. And if you are a Scientologist secretly lurking here, um, I want to say to you, please come and, um, you know, hit up my email. Ask me questions. Let's have a let's have a dialogue. Let's have a conversation because uh, that is the first step to finding out truth to anything is having a real conversation with somebody about it. Okay, and if you don't care for my, uh, you know, way of speaking or whatever, and you have somebody else in mind that you want to talk to, reach out to them. We are all open. Our inboxes are open. Um, please email us because I I do respond as much as I can, um, and um, want to make sure that you know, that dialogue starts happening because when I started questioning it to myself, I only had the internet to ask. And, um, the internet led me to a lot of places that told me a lot of things I did not know. Um, so definitely, 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 um, do that. Like, let's get the dialogue going. And to Osa, um, who's watching. Hi, Kristen. Oh, I heard Julian got kicked out of Osa. Oh, sad panda. Now he's a staff, you know, teaching the staff policies. But hi, James. Hi, all the people at OSA watching. I want to say to you specifically, stop calling the police on the protesters, guys. It's bad form. Somebody's going to go to jail because eventually the FBI is going to get really interested in that. And they're going to start tracking down the people making these false 911 calls. And even if you're getting your OT super old prisoners to do it in Minnesota and they're calling the LAPD on these fake swattings, that person they don't want to go to jail for you. They're going to, they're going to spill the beans. Okay. So eventually it's going to come back to you. 
So let's just stop that. Okay. It's not productive. It's actually working for us and not for you because the more it happens, the more media attention we get. So good job. And people see that the LAPD is totally corrupt and in your pocket. Not good for them. Not good PR. They're not going to like that very much anymore. You're going to see that you're not going to get a lot of these LAPD officers coming, you know, and um, getting uh, the cash money from you because they're going to realize, uh oh, hot dog. Uh, my kids are going to see me protecting Scientology instead of people who are being abused and children. And um, maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I don't want to do that. Um, yeah. So it's going to be, it's going to be bad news bears for you guys. Um, yeah, this is, I, I would just say stop. I would just say stop. I mean, you guys don't listen to me anyway, cause I'm an SP. What do I know? But, uh, I live in the real world where you guys look terrible. It's bad. Look, Kristen, bad, 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 bad. Look so bad. Um, I would advise, you know, getting better uniforms. So you don't look like funeral directors. Um, and just trying to like be people, but to do that, you'd have to leave. So you can also do that. Don't forget can walk out. The Aftermath Foundation is still there. They can help you. Um, or again, contact one of us. Um, so let me see here. I did see some more questions come in. Um, what's the one thing from Daphne's mom that I'm going to do today to be kind to myself? Uh, well, I do have to go to Costco after this guys, uh, cause I have four kids to feed and they eat, I can't, they drink a whole half gallon of milk in one day, guys, one day, one day. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to go to Costco and then I'm going to read. I'm still, I, I have Jamie's book to read, but I'm still in the middle of, um, the subtle art of not giving a fuck. And this is a fantastic book guys. Um, so if you have not read it, please pick up that book and read it. Um, brilliant book. And then Jamie's is next on my agenda. Um, but yeah, that's one thing that I'm doing. Um, how much from cool blue 64, how much were these policies taught to the public? Thank you for your truth. Uh, so that, all those policies that I told you, minus the first one that's an OSA directive, because that's top secret OSA stuff that only got taught to OSA. All of those other policies taught to the public every single day. Every single day. They're all contained in one course, um, put together in one course, I should say, uh, called the PTSSP course, where you learn about why you got sick or you know how to handle it actually says on the front, PTSSP course, confront and shatter suppression, which none of them, apparently we're SBs. We are supposed to be shattered by them telling us things, right? They're going to shatter us. Um, yeah, still here, uh, still not shattered. But yeah, those that's taught all the time, every day, every day. Uh, thank you for your uh, super chat, uh, Karen Voller. Um, thank you for doing what you do. You're explaining all this in such a way that easily understood. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, comment. The American Academy of Pediatrics has been working to spread knowledge about child trafficking. Yes. I forwarded a great deal of the information Serge, you and others have provided. Thank you. Thank you, Midwest. Um, Kadok. I appreciate that because this is so important. If we can get actual, uh, organize, you know, legit organizations on board to highlight this. Um, that is what we need. That is what we need. hundred percent. We need, uh, the APA, the AMA, uh, you know, all of these things to be like, Hey, this is what's going on. This is how it's affecting people mentally, especially the children. It's the trauma that's being created and get them shut down that way. A hundred percent. Uh, smooth, steep SPC TV in New York city. 100% thank you, Nora. The FBI will start to investigate. Swatting isn't a joke. Can you imagine them doing this to me in Times Square? That's like a terrorism charge. By the way, guys, if you're not subscribed to Smooth Steve SPTV in New York City, subscribe to him. He is out there in Times Square, just like you mentioned, protesting the New York org. So this is what I'm talking about. Like, if, if they did that to you in the middle of Times Square, it, yes, uh, the, um, the DOJ... <laughs> Homeland Security would be all over it. And I don't know why they're not yet. So hello, Homeland Security. Um, we're going to start writing to some people. We're writing to your congressman. That's the other thing. I didn't want to forget to shout out while I was still here. If you have not written to your representative who's running for election, um, please do so and ask them 
do they support an inquiry into Scientology's tax-exempt status? Okay, we need to just keep flooding these people that are all in the middle of their election cycle to let them know, hey, this is actually an important item. I'm going to, my vote hangs on what your answer is here. And this is to people on both sides of the aisle because we need Congress to start an inquiry into this and get the ball rolling. So, yes, let's all of those things. Okay. Um, you guys, this has been tremendous, tremendous, tremendous. Um, and I am so grateful um, that you're all here listening today. Uh, I'm going to try again the balance thing. I'm trying to figure out. Um, uh, oh, Fluffer Squirrel UK. Jessica and Shannon both have fantastic info on their community pages. Correct. Correct. That's Jessica Palmadessa um, and Shannon, who's over there in Chicago. So please go to their community pages to get all the information on like a, a template of what to say if you don't want to just say that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Let's keep our eyes on the prize. Okay. And uh, make sure, just like it was suggested to me, that you're doing one thing good for yourself today that doesn't have anything to do with Scientology. Okay, because the world is so much bigger than Scientology. And that's why we're out here to live it, to love it, um, and to take it in. All right. And I will see you guys on the flippity dippity. All right.